So, a few videos ago, I told you, everything we have set up right here is just temporary and it's going to be going away soon. And that is because we are building a crypto mining shed. The whole build is going to be epic. And if you missed that video I'm talking about, I'm going to go ahead and link it right here, as well as in the end of today's video. To get ready for the shed build, I started making a list, and I've checked it twice. And on this list, it has everything that I should need to mine with the mini miners, the mini ASIC miners, as well as the full-powered ASIC miners, like the Ant Miner K7 and KA3. And I decided to share my list with you because I might be missing a few things for this shed build. And anything that you think I'm missing or you think that I should use or any recommendations at all for this crypto mining shed build, please let me know in the comments down below. Now, we are gonna hop inside and I'm gonna get on Amazon and start ordering everything I need from internet adapters, PSUs, PDUs, power cords, fire protection, security, plus so much more. I'm your host, Tech Hustler. Oakley Dokley, welcome to another video. And if it's your first time here, my name's Tech Hustler. We mine cryptocurrency here. We review crypto projects and even go over some websites and applications that you can start using right now to make a little bit of crypto on the side. So if you like that, go ahead and smash that subscribe button. And while you're down there, hit that like button too. That's the number one thing you can do to support my channel. And as always, I have to let you know that I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. This is for educational and entertainment purposes only. So diving right in, the first thing that you're gonna need to mine cryptocurrency at home is the internet. Now, for my shed out there, I'm not going to rewire my house to get an ethernet cord out there. I'm not gonna get a new service. I'm just gonna use some type of internet adapter like this Go Coax right here, or this is actually what I use, the TP-Link ethernet adapter. What this does, it, it, it gives you internet in rooms that you don't have internet. Right here with this TP link, all you do is plug one into your router and the other one is gonna go wherever you want internet. These work like a charm. I have them all over my house. Now, you can also go this route right here through the um, coaxial cable. This is gonna get you higher speeds. I had to use this when I was doing Helium 5G. So as long as you have a router and somewhere that you can tie in a cable cord, you're gonna be able to get internet to any room, any shed, anywhere you need it to be. Next, once you have that ethernet, if you have more than one miner, you're gonna need an ethernet switch. Once again, with the mini miners, some of them run off Wi-Fi, even though I still prefer to use an ethernet switch. You can see right here, I have bought this one several times. This is an eight port ethernet switch but I need to go ahead and move up to this 16 port right here, this big boy. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and add that to my cart right now. And of course, this is gonna go hand in hand with getting ethernet in there. Go ahead and pick up some ethernet cables. Why not go with Cat6? And I would buy a bundle or you're gonna end up like me and have these miners come in and you're not gonna have enough ethernet cords or power cords and you're gonna be on Amazon ordering some stuff and waiting two, three, four, five days for it to come in. So go ahead, order some ethernet cords, order uh, multiple, uh, multiple sizes and um, maybe in multiple colors too, why not? Now you need something to put the miners on and I've been through several types of shelves and what I recommend 
is a metal shelf, something very sturdy. Now, this is similar to what I have. I like my metal, not plastic, because the plastic can melt and can start to sag. And um, I like my platforms or, or the floor of the shelf. I like them solid. Here, I'm gonna pull up another shelf right here. Now, this isn't bad, it is still metal, it's pretty solid, but the floor of the shelves are not solid. They are slatted. Now, that is good if you wanna move some power cords or some ethernet cords through them, but it can be a pain in the butt because your miners and everything's gonna sit uneven. And what most people do is they'll get like a plastic sheet or put a board down there so they don't have to deal with that. And like I said, if you're doing one or two mini miners or a GPU mining rig, you might be okay going with a uh, plastic shelf, but if you're doing a couple larger ASIC miners, this is gonna get hot and it start, it's gonna start melting and sagging. Now, it might be good for a starter shelf, but at the end of the day, I would get something metal, something solid without these slats. You know, um, you could even maybe build your own shelf. Um, you know, I'm just not a big fan of using wood with all that electrical e equipment. Now, it's time to get power to your miners. If you're going with the mini miners, they'll run off 100 volts all the way up to 240 volts. So a simple outlet uh, surge protector like this will do. I always try to go with a heavy duty one, at least 15 amps, 20 amps would be better. But if you're doing the mini miners, this is all you're gonna need. And even if you're not doing, even if you're doing the larger miners, you're still gonna need a, uh, a surge protector, a power strip like this, just to plug other things in like your fans, your thermometers, your uh, monitors, stuff like that. So it's always good to have, have a couple high quality surge protector slash power strips. Now, if you are going the 240 route, now these ones are a little bit expensive, but this is pretty much the best one you can buy from Triplight. Now, if you are going the 240 route, you're gonna need something like this. This is a PDU, a power distribution unit, and you just plug your miners into this and plug this into the wall, and um, that's pretty much it for 240. Now, I will link a couple different ones, and I'm actually working with a sponsor right now for a metered PDU because that is what I prefer. But um, the Trip Light is a very good brand and it's right here on Amazon. You can get it in two days. So when you start buying miners, one thing you're gonna notice is they do not come with plugs. Now, as far as the mini miners, this is what you're gonna wanna use right here, a 15 to 20 amp. Now, this is a NEMA 515P by a C13. So this is gonna be your C13. This is what's gonna plug into your um, PSU. And then right here, bada bing, bada boom, that's gonna plug into the wall. You're gonna wanna grab a few of these for your mini miners, and I would get them in a few different lengths. Um, I'd probably go with a couple six footers and a couple three footers. I actually have to order a couple cables right now. Now, if we are going with the 240 route, oh, how did, how did that get there? Let's see. Okay, so if we are going with the 240 route, you're gonna need plugs like this. For my Canon Avalon A1366 Bitcoin miner, it requires two of these plugs, and this is a C19 to a C20. You're gonna see a lot of these out there when you start using those larger ASIC miners. Now, a more common one right here, and this will work for your uh, mini miners as well if you wanna run them on 220. This is a C14 to a C13. So like I said, this is one of the more popular uh, power cords for amp miners. And look at that. You can get them in some pretty colors. I think my theme is gonna be orange. And once again, I would go with a couple three footers and a couple six footers.
Oakley Doakley. Now we're talking about security and some safety stuff. You're gonna wanna have some eyes on your mining farm. I use the ring cameras. I have them all around my house. I have them in my office. I have them in the mining farm. Um, I just like using ring, but there are, um, there are some other cheaper options out there like right here with the Wise cameras or YZ, I'm not really sure how you pronounce that. At the end of the day, you just wanna have some eyes on your investment. Um, you're gonna wanna protect that, and you might even uh, wanna think about getting some insurance. And speaking of protection, you're gonna want some fire protection. Now, currently I have a fire extinguisher. Now you're gonna wanna make sure to check this yearly and you might need to get it refilled every now and then. But you know, this is good if let's say you're at home, something happens. It's just good to have a fire extinguisher in the house in general, but you might not be there in time. Let's say if something catastrophic happened in your crypto mining shed or your mining garage, and that's where something like these will uh, fall into place. This is a automatic fire extinguisher. So when it gets hot enough, it's going to explode and hopefully put out whatever flames you have. So I'm gonna have a couple of these in my mining garage as well as in the crypto mining shed. And one more thing that is good to think about, I'm looking for like a smoke detector that will turn off power like if smoke is detected i want something that will turn off the powers to my fans because you already know air creates a bigger fire so i'm looking for something like that if you know what i'm talking about put a link in the description down below and i'll definitely use it now here is something you definitely want to consider if you are mining in your home, in your garage, in a closet, you got a mining room or a mining shed, especially if you have a significant other or neighbors, you're gonna wanna think about sound protection. These miners get very loud, mainly due because the fans that keep them cool and you can run into some problems with your neighbor or your significant other because I can hear my miners in my garage almost from every room in my house. So we have a couple examples of some foam right here. I am gonna completely insulate my shed and then I'm gonna use foam on any wall that I'm not using for something else. So a couple options right there, definitely something to consider. And to be quite honest with you, I need some foam in here right now because there's probably an echo on this microphone and you're gonna need some fans i like going with these box fans they're 20 inches they're really easy to build around and they are effective they're inexpensive and they are better than nothing and when you start to use them to build out your mining farm you can use these filters right here they're 20 by 20 by one inch and you can simply just hold it up to the fan and this suction is gonna hold it to the fan. So I really like using box fans. You know, I have probably 10 or 12 of them here, but when, oh, actually, actually, I also, you know, since I'm mining in the garage, I also use some fans like this in the window. And these are just good to have in general in your house if you're ever sick to get some fresh air in the house. But yeah, I have these in the garage with my, uh, you know, with my crypto mining set up there. And I have two windows. So I have uh, one set up as an intake and one set up as an exhaust. And then I just use a couple of these 20 inch fans and bada bing, bada boom, that is good enough for me. But I am lucky uh, my garage is insulated and I do have some trees that keep it shaded from the sun a little bit. Now for my crypto mining shed, I will be using some box fans, best believe, some box fans and if i have windows i will be using some window fans maybe even a window ac unit but um one thing you will be seeing more is just some more commercial industrial style fans because i'm gonna need to move that air a lot of air very fast so here's an example of a 10 inch fan right here 
let's see this is more so what i'm probably going to be using i'll probably have several of these on the back just to exhaust all that hot air so definitely something you need to consider is fans whenever you're crypto mining um one thing i will say those swamp chillers those swamp fans that um use cold water or or ice to cool the environment and um, create some wind flow i would not use those because those tend to raise the humidity up too much and that can create a lot of problems for your miners i strictly just use these fans right here that i've shown you and maybe we'll throw in an ac unit and now a couple obvious things you know duct tape you should have a, a roll of duct tape pretty much in any room in every room in your house anyways but definitely keep a roll of duct tape in your uh, your mining area in your mining toolbox you never know when you're gonna need to tape something up then of course tie uh, zip ties tie straps whatever you want to call them you're gonna need those for wire management I do have a ton of these but I like using those little bread ties those little wire bread ties you get them for free and I save them you know whenever you get electronics and stuff like that and that's what I use um, but I will reach for a zip tie if I'm out of those little uh, bread ties and of course you know why not why not have some l lgb why not have some rgb light it up make it look cool everyone's gonna think it think it's cool anyways throw so, so throw in some led rgb I, I i'm sorry guys you gotta have a thermometer thermometers are very important now i prefer something like this you can call this a weather station i like to know how hot it is inside my mining garage or mining shed i also like to know the temperature on the outside as well as the humidity if the humidity is too high or if the humidity is too low that can damage your miner I also like this thermometer right here because it can give you the day's forecast and if you're expecting a thunderstorm, a lightning storm, that's when I unplug my miners and I shut things down and always, always check for leaks. Now you don't have to go with something extravagant like this. You can go with a simple thermometer. Like I said, you want an indoor an outdoor temperature and you at least want the humidity if not the forecast as well so we are almost done with today's video but before we get out of here i just want to go over a couple tools that i like to have around just to you know test my miners and tinker so the first is going to be an electricity usage monitor this one right here is going to work for all of your mini miners your iot miners your chia miners your your computers anything that is 100 to 110 volts you can plug it in right there see what the electricity usage is and figure out what it is costing you in electricity now if you want to check the electricity usage on your larger asic miners like the k7 or the s19s you're going to need a metered pdu or some type of meter box now i will have a few in the next day or so so um remember to hit that bell so you don't miss that upload remember earlier in the video we talked about how loud the miners were and how it could get you in trouble with your neighbors or your significant other now this is a tool that you're going to want to use right here it's a decibel meter this will tell you how loud your individual miner is or how loud your complete mining farm is or how loud that significant other is when they're yelling at you for how loud the miners are and this is a cool tool <laughs> this is a cool tool that i just got in i haven't been able to try it out yet but it is a wind speed meter a cf film tester i want to use this to see if my uh my box fans are actually doing anything at all i know they're moving air around i know they're not strong enough to cool the air but at the end of the day air speed is what matters the most at least i think so so anyways i bought this right here um 
you're gonna see this out in uh, future videos. Once again, this is a win speed meter, not a must, but it is cool to have, especially when you have a YouTube channel that you review miners on. <laughs> so the wind meter is not a must, but one thing that is a must is a thermometer gun you know we had a thermometer that's going to tell you how hot how cold it is whatever but this thermometer gun you can point at your miners and you can find some hot spots you can see if there's any problems if things are melting you can really figure out a lot of issues with a thermometer gun and you can see right there 26 bucks is not that bad at all you can even step it up a notch and get something like this right here, a thermal imaging gun. Now this is quite expensive, but it is so cool. And you can see exactly where the heat is coming from. And you can even find some ghosts. Oakley Doakley. So that does it for my list. I think we covered enough. I'm gonna have everything uh, that we talked about today linked in the description down below. And if you use any of my Amazon links, I do get something like one to 3% of a kickback. So I do appreciate that. Let me know in the comments down below if you use my links. And don't forget, if I forgot anything, if I'm missing in anything, if there's anything you would recommend, put the link in the description down below and I'm gonna throw it in my cart. So other than that, that's pretty much gonna do it for everything we need to mine cryptocurrency at home. That's also gonna do it for this video. So as always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. My name's Tech Hustler. Happy mining. Peace.